This is our old Vila Capstan lathe. Handy machine for doing certain sorts of jobs, um, as small capstans are. And we've been using it to make these little pieces. And they're just drilled and tapped at one end and parted off to length. We've got to do a hundred off in each of three sizes. And we've got a 50mm long by 3 8 diameter ones done, M5 threads. We've got 40mm long with M4 threads done. And we've got left to do some little tiny ones, 20mm long with a 3mm thread. And we don't have the, cap, the, the collets to hold the bar. Really, really annoying. To do the bigger ones, we've been using this unit. Let's put this up here. And this is a Crawford Collets True Grip Chuck. And it takes what look like 5C collets, but they're actually slightly modified with a coarser thread on the back end. So these things work by Let me put the chuck in. Don't know if you can see that. That's actually rotating the thread in the back of the chuck here. So normally a collet would just screw into a draw bar. But these, I'm not sure if the key, there's supposed to be a key inside this, it seems to work fine without it really engaging. Um, but you can screw these in left-handed, screw them in so far and then do it up with a chuck as you would a normal three-jaw chuck. I'm not going to tighten this up because there's nothing in the collet but um, yeah quite a useful thing. This one came on a, a back plate with, with our old Colchester student lathe but because the Viola Capstan came without any collets, uh, I think I only paid about 100 quid for it. That was about 20 or, yeah, a bit more than that years ago. Um, but yeah, in order to use collets on the Capstan, we put this thing on and it just screws through here into the, into the um, back plate. That came with the machine. And this is the chuck that came with the machine. As I said, it didn't come with a. It came with one collet. To use collets on it, we usually use the, the collet chuck. But we haven't got a 3 16 collet for the smallest size of bar that we've got this job to do. So we've been faffing about with a chuck and the problem with this chuck is what happens with old scroll chucks. They're just plain wear out. This has obviously not got the, the bolt on tops to these jaws. Um, but what happens, especially when you put the jaws on, pressure on the front tilts this outwards so it ends up only gripping at the back of the jaw and the bar that you're trying to hold can waggle around at the front it's causing us major hassle it, it, we can't use it for the job that we've got to do so 
I thought of previously about trying to use ER collets in a capstan because they're, A they're readily available and cheap and they're kind of, if not multi-sized, they've got a range of sizes um, this thing here is something that we bought to use in the CNC for holding drills with um, and we've just put a four to five mil collet in that and that's holding a 3 16 dowel pin really nicely secure so project how to fit this in here so that we can hold our 3 16 bar for turning here we've got the flywheel removed from the back plate and then the back plate just screws on to the nose of the lathe spindle these are just locking screws so that once it's screwed on you can nip them up and make sure that the chuck doesn't spin off when you put the machine into reverse um, I know it was a toss up whether to make something to fit on here to take our ER collet chuck I mean we could make something to take the collets directly but I think to do it properly would involve hardening and grinding so we need something that's going to hold that about there and I think rather than making up a big lump to fit onto this we'll take we'll take this off and make a new a new piece to screw on the spindle so yeah let's get that up and screw this off make some to screw on here, find out what the diameter this is, what size thread this is, which is pretty coarse. Um, and we'll just have a block. I guess it'll have to have a couple of pinch screws on it to clamp this. And we'll end up with that being about there roughly yeah it would be nice to have the, the collet closer but you know, I think this is the easy way of doing it well that's 46 millimeter diameter on that plane portion I'll just move the uh, the caliper smidge but that is 46 millimeters thread is 45 okay See that? Not going to focus on that, is it? That's 3.5 mil pitch. Okay, let's find a suitable lump of metal.
I've been got the piece turned to a reasonable outside diameter, faced off, drilled to 22. We've now got to bore it out to 25, and we need to get it a really nice fit, 25. And we need to go all the way through, which that ain't going to go at the minute, so let's adjust that. Oh there. Wow, I bet this chat is like nobody's business. We shall see. Well, we've got this board out to what you might call a tapping size if we were going to tap it. Um, and then the plain part I've left at 45 millimeters. And what I'm hoping to do is when we feed this tool out, um, as soon as it touches, starts touching this surface. Um, we should be out to size. We've got a, a bit of a tricky job to do here because we're doing a fairly coarse metric thread on an imperial blade, it's got an inch lead screw on it. Um, so although we can get 3.5 millimeter pitch, it's usually a pretty good idea to keep the lead screw engaged and we've got an added problem that we're threading up to a shoulder inside which we can't see um, but I hope I've set the stop up for this I managed to put a chip on the tip in doing so which is darned annoying um, so we have one reasonable looking edge left just there it's not too bad, but it's got a little bit of wear on it. That's the one I chipped, ah, which is annoying. So we'll just have to see if this cuts okay. Fingers crossed. This is a free cutting mild steel, which should help matters. And also, because we're cutting up to a shoulder, I need to be very careful how far we feed in here. And it's often recommended that you set the compound slide over at an angle so that when you're feeding the, uh, making subsequent passes when, when, when you're threading, you only cut on one side. And the idea is that you only cut on one side of these, this V. Um, and as you feed out, you come up, come back at an angle. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm hoping it's going to cut okay, and I've got this set so that it, it hits the stop. And I've got to be very, very careful to stomp on the brake when it gets there. We're going really, really slow. This is engaged right this minute. I've got to wind this in. have a trial practice run.
then if we're actually doing this for real, we would wind the cross slide back in. We don't need to do that because we're already in. And then put the machine into reverse to bring it out again. Okay, time to do this for real. Probably won't be called this. Ah. Well, we're getting close. I don't know if we can see in there. So, a couple of cuts left, I think. Let's just do a couple on camera. Um, And if I chicken out and uh, stop the feed before we quite get to the stop, and winding it round, mainly be using a chuck just to get it up to the stop. And then we're winding in. And into reverse. Go for another cut. Not too many, I don't think. Well, on the last pass, I've got a witness on this plane section. I've got a, the beginnings of a thread form, so that should be as big as it needs to be. Um, now this is tricky because I can't test this without taking it out of the chuck. Um, and even then I can't test it without boring this bit out to 46. Oh my gosh! Oh uh, god. I just have to hope that it's the right size. I've got no other way of checking it. Hold on. We'll pour this out. Take it out, check it on the machine, fingers crossed. Well, that first attempt at getting this thread right didn't work, and I had to bore out the plane diameter to 46 millimeters before I could try it on the machine. And it didn't even want to start. It was just way too small. Well, here's our adapter, finally ready to go. Because the first attempt at doing the internal thread didn't work out, we had to put the piece back on the on the Colchester Triumph and realign cutting tool and the lead screw and everything so that it's all, all the, the threading was synchronized and cut the thread out a bit deeper um, awkward but got there then once we've done that turn this end we've got a little step there it doesn't matter but it just makes it a lot a nicer piece a couple of grub screws in there to hold our ER collet chuck in position and then a plain hole in the middle so that we can unscrew this uh, yeah quite tight but that's that's good it means it's not going to spin off when you turn the thing into reverse because there's no uh, 
no locking screws in this. Might be had on the back plate of the chuck, but yeah. There we go. It's a shame we can't make use of this collet. This has got a taper in the, the nose of the spindle. Um, but yeah, we have one collet with the machine. It would be really nice to make something that fits in that and works with a proper closer. Um, so that we can open and close the collet without stopping the machine. But um, for short runs this is okay. And that locks on quite nice. That's only just... Yep, I don't think that's coming off. That's cool. Should be useful. So we're just checking the run out of this. We've got a 3 16 dowel pin in the ER collet. And what we got? Thou and a half. That's not bad. It would be nice if it was nothing, but I think that's uh, okay. So here's the piece all set up. This is actually the last one we've got. The alcohol is a little bit fiddly because you've got to wind them in a long way to get them tight. And then you've got to wind them out a long way when, once they're done, but still. Helps to release the lock on the spindle before you start doing anything. Oh, look at the bend on that. We've got all we need, but just to show you the operation of caps, and let's go with this. And if we were going for the next one, show you what I was saying, the problem with the, the collet chuck. Normal collet, that'd be loose, but an AR, you've got to actually undo the darn thing. So that's a little bit fiddly. And that'd be the yeah, end of the bar. And that was a bent bar, it wasn't the thing running out. The bar was bent, but uh, yeah. As I said, handy little machines, 